Morning and invited in uh, pro-Russian MPs who duly dismissed the previous administration and appointed a new pro-Russian leader. So there are certainly turmoils here in a very ethnically, religiously, politically mixed up tiny peninsula here in the Black Sea where you have as I said, a pro, uh, an ethnic Russian majority, but you also have Ukrainians here and a small Muslim Crimean Tatar, ethnic Tatar grouping, who, all of whom want different things. So it is a real hotbed. And right now, uh, the epicenter, as you say, of this divide between East and West, which is a fault line in Ukraine. Well, and as the president says, there are now reports that Russian troops are in Crimea right now. Uh, Fareed Zakaria, the host of CNN's Fareed Zakaria GPS, is joining us. Uh, Fareed, to, to, to put it bluntly, this is an extremely complicated situation we're watching unfold right now, isn't it? Uh, it's extremely complicated. Look, let's remember when we think of Ukraine, the western part of Ukraine that uh, is, is the part we've been hearing from Kiev was historically Poland or ruled by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They were in the West. They, in a sense, want to just return to Europe, which is where they have been for hundreds of years. Crimea was part of Russia until 1954. So this really is, when people talk about a divided country, it doesn't get more divided. You mentioned uh, Russian troops. Remember, there are already Russian troops in Ukraine because the black, Russia's Black Sea Fleet is, is located there. So Russia doesn't have to send troops in. They already are there. And they, they could be, and probably a lot of those uh, masked gunmen are actually Russian soldiers or are in some way coordinating with Russian soldiers. So there, Russia has so many ways short of invasion to be involved and to make trouble. Uh, and in many parts of Ukraine, though not the majority, they do have the support of the local population. And Fareed, when the president of the United States says, as, as he just did a few minutes ago in the White House, he says there will be costs of any military intervention in Ukraine. He didn't define what those costs are, but nobody realistically thinks the U.S. or the EU or NATO are going to get involved militarily in what's going on in Ukraine. What is he talking about? Financial sanctions, if you will, or political uh, sanctions against Russia if there is a formal military intervention in Ukraine? I think the president was wise to leave it vague because you never in international relations want to specify in advance, you know, what you're going to do. You want to leave all your options on the table. But you're, you're right, Wolf. Probably there isn't a military option here for the United States or for Europe. But there are economic sanctions. There is a G8 meeting coming up, a summit. Remember, the G8 was the seven richest countries of the world invited Russia to be part of that exclusive club because it, it's, you know, it surrendered during the, the Cold War, became part of the international community. That could be, that could be something I would, I would very seriously consider whether Russia's membership in the G8 could be suspended. There are those kinds of acts. Russia very much wants to be considered a leading power. And if it were to send troops in in an overt invasion, I think Russia should be suspended from the G8. So I take it you haven't yet concluded Fareed, that Russia has actually invaded Ukraine. The word invade, obviously a very sensitive word. I think it remains so unclear. Things are fluid. As I say, they have so many mechanisms. Russian intelligence is deeply active in all of Ukraine and particularly in Crimea. But I don't get the, you know, I don't get the sense that they have. The reports don't suggest that yet. And the fact that the Russians are categorically denying it suggests that they also think that there's some, you know, what, the, what is going on now is very low-grade activity. As you know, there was one report about 2,000 Russian troops coming on an aircraft, but that has not been confirmed, even though it was rumored for several hours. And it does not, again, right now, does not appear to be true. Stand by, uh, Fareed, uh, Gloria Borger, and, uh, uh, and uh, Jim Shudo are here with me in the Situation Room. Uh, Jim, uh, the Russians have already got some sort of explanation uh, of why there are at least some Russian troops in Crimea. That's right. The Russian ambassador to the UN, Vitaly Cherkin, just saying to cameras a short time ago, less than an hour ago, that this movement of troops falls within the agreement that Russia has with Ukraine. So they're saying that this is legal, not an invasion, but they're coming in uh, under the auspices of a deal that they had with Ukrainian authorities. So they're, they're creating a narrative here 
short of an invasion. Uh, but another thing stands in my mind. I got some guidance earlier today before we had confirmation that these were Russian troops on the ground. And someone said to me, you know, I asked the question about, is Russia planning a Georgia-like invasion? Uh, and this A few years ago, Russian they, troops actually did invade the neighboring country exactly, of Georgia. Exactly, and around in Olympics, too, you'll right. remember, in 2008. And, and the, the, the source said to me, well, don't look for something necessarily of that scale. Look for something smaller scale. Black ops, special forces, something more of a pinprick, something that's, that's more easily um, described as falling short of invasion. And that's a thing. Invasion is, uh, you know, well, it's, it's, a it's, a definition, big it's a definition. It's a definition, as Farid, Farid was saying, they've already got the Black Sea Fleet. They've exactly. already got people there. And so, and, you know, as uh, the UN ambassador was saying, we're not invading anybody. We, we have a bilateral agreement. We are allowed to be there, and that's their story, mm -hmm. and they're and they're sticking to it. I mean, the government in Kiev doesn't accept that. No, no, it does not. And the the president today, by the way, was careful to go out of his way to commend the restraint mm -hmm. on the on the part of Ukraine, and and sort of said, okay, good, you're you're being restrained. We we appreciate that, but but then said the the shot across the bow and said, you know, no invasion here. But again, as as Farid says. What can the president do at this point? Maybe expel Russia from the from the G8, but economic sanctions? I mean, it it seems that there aren't any really good solutions here or any immediate solutions. Well, let's see. You know, we're going to hear right now uh, from uh, an influential member of the United States Senate. Uh, we'll speak in a moment with Senator John McCain. There you see him up on Capitol Hill. When we come back, we'll ask him, what should the United States be doing right now?